Good evening. It's good to be with you guys. Welcome to our daily devotional scripture that encourages you to pray. Uh, we're going to be looking in Galatians tonight. We're going to start Galatians chapter 1. And we're going with a, a new focus here with our um, daily devotions. We're going to be going through scripture that encourages you to pray. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at scripture and then asking a couple of questions uh, about the text. And so we're going to be asking, for example, as we read through the text, what would we pray about in this situation that we encounter in the text? What should we pray about uh, in the situation that we encounter in the text? Um, are there similar examples elsewhere in Scripture? Uh, <clears throat> we're going to also ask, what are the key words that we see in the text? And uh, what do these uh, teach us? Uh, what sort of insight do they give to us regarding prayer? And are there examples in Scripture of God answering the types of prayer which these passages lead us to, um, to consider? And so, really looking forward to sharing with you. We're going to be looking at uh, Galatians uh, chapter 1. So I want to encourage you to get out your Bibles, turn to Galatians chapter 1. And we're going to just look at the first couple of verses tonight. And then we'll just uh, begin our study in the book of Galatians. And I want to encourage you to do a lot of talking, as you already are, in, uh, on, in the social media broadcast. Uh, lots of thumbs up, smiley faces, hearts, all of those things. When you do that, you are uh, boosting the ranking of this video in Facebook's algorithm. And it's amazing to see how many views that we get on our videos, devotional videos, worship videos, and other videos that we produce as a church. And we know that most of the people watching are not members of our church, and that's wonderful. So please, everybody, take advantage of these resources, share these resources. I want to encourage you to share uh, this broadcast onto your social media. That's what I was just doing at the very beginning of this broadcast. So I um, want to encourage you now to um, get out a pad of paper, a pen, a pencil, um, because God is going to speak to you tonight through his word, and we're going to be looking at the very important topic of prayer and scripture that encourages us. Uh, to pray. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love and your mercy. It's new to us every morning. We thank you, Father, for all the blessings in our lives that we receive from your hands today. We thank you, Father, for the blessings of your creation. We thank you, Father, for the blessings of the vocations of all who um, help make our life uh, more enjoyable today, whether it was somebody working in a grocery store or in a beauty shop or at the bank or the gas station or, or the dentist office <laughs> or wherever it may be. Father, we, we thank you for, um, they are all part of your plan to provide for our daily bread. And so we thank you, Father, for we have been well provided for. You also desire for us to serve other people. And so we have to, we have to ask for forgiveness. We haven't always served as we could have, as you would have desired for us to today. And so we ask for forgiveness for that. And um, we also pray, Father, that you would um, bless us in your time, our time in your word. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to learn more about you and uh, about your desire for our lives. Bless us with a good night's rest that we will awake refreshed and restored tomorrow so that when the opportunity clock goes off in the morning, <clears throat> that we will uh, be ready to, to be about your work uh, in your way. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name, according to your will and for your glory, and all of God's children, we all say, Amen. Amen. Guys, it's great to be with you in God's word. So uh, we are going to be in Galatians chapter 1. We're going to start here. So let me read Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 to 5 uh, for us. It says, uh, Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, the first thing I want to focus on tonight is this phrase here where Paul says, he says, Paul, an apostle. And I want to just focus on uh, that description that Paul uses of himself. He's, he says, I am an apostle. Uh, and I think 
this is, uh, there's something, some important things for us to take away from this. First of all, Paul knows who he is. He knows who he is. He knows that he's an apostle. And not only does he know who he is, but he publicly states who he is. And Paul knows that his identity is centered in Christ. And I think this is very important for us as Christians, that we know our identity, that we are baptized believers, and that we have been grafted into uh, the family of Abraham, and we have been grafted into the living vine of Jesus, and that uh, our identity was established in the waters of our baptism, and that we have been called sons and daughters of the Most High God. And it's important for us to, to know our own identities because life is going to throw challenges and difficulties and temptations and tests at us. And so it's important as we go through life to remember our identity because there will be people all around us who will have their opinion of our identity and they will try to impose their opinion of your identity upon you. And when that happens, you have to always remember to go back to the waters of your baptism. I'm a baptized daughter of the Most High God. I am a baptized son of the Most High God. And I have been redeemed, and I have been indwelt with the Holy Spirit. And uh, regardless of whatever anybody else would say, this is who I am. Um, Paul says, I am an apostle. Now, I want to do just a little bit of teaching tonight with you about the term apostle in the Bible. It's, it's an important term. Um, and we need to understand that the word apostle, the idea of apostle is used in a broad sense, a more inclusive general sort of sense, and then in a more narrow and restricted sense. And so what, what do we mean by that? So if you turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 14, um, and uh, verse 14, you, uh, if you wanna jot that down, Acts 14, 14, we read, but when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd shouting, and the story goes on from there. Why do I bring that up? Because Paul and Barnabas are identified as what? They are identified as being apostles. Uh, if you turn in your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6, let me turn to that here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6, we see something kind of interesting. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6 says, We were not looking for praise from men, nor from you or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you. Now, why do we point that out? Because who is the we in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6? The we here refers to, most likely, in most people's opinions, Paul and Timothy and Silvanus. And so this is sort of the broad sense of the use of the word apostle. And so the word apostle is used in the New Testament in, in some senses, in some places, uh, almost in a way that you might use the word an evangelist. It's somebody who's going out into the world to tell the world the good news about Jesus. Uh, why do I bring that up? Because the New Testament also uses the word apostle in a very narrow sort of sense. And um, in other words, and what is that? Uh, it's someone who was with Christ and a witness to his resurrection. And probably one of the clearest examples of that is when it was time for the church to replace Judas. Uh, you know, there's an interesting passage here in the book of Acts. If you turn in your Bibles to Acts, the very first chapter, Acts chapter 1, and we're going to look at verses 21 to 26. Let me just turn here and read this for us. It says, Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men, now listen to this, who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias, 
They prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two men you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the 11 apostles. So the, the word apostolic, the idea of being an apostle, is somebody who was with Christ in his public earthly ministry and was a witness of his resurrection. And so that's the much more sort of narrow sense of the word apostle. So the word apostle is used within scripture uh, in a narrow uh, sense and also in a broad sense. Uh, there's some other examples um, of how it's used in a narrow sense. I'll just give you the citations. Luke 11, uh, verse 49, Ephesians 3, verse 5, and Revelation 18, verse 20. So is there a prayer insight in this for us? I think there is. I think we need to be confident of our identity in Christ without being prideful. Paul was confident of his identity in Christ without being prideful. We also need to be that way as well. And we should always accept that there are other disciples who have definitely seen more and done more than us. Amen? Amen. Then the next phrase I want to look at from Galatians chapter 1 is this. It says, uh, regarding Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age. God's desire ever since the Garden of Eden has been to permanently deliver us from our fall into sin. Um, only God could fix what we managed to mess up. And removing our sins delivers us eternally. When, when our sins are removed from us, then we are delivered, according here to Galatians chapter 1, we are delivered. We are delivered eternally because now we have eternal life. But it also delivers us from this present evil age. I want to read to you from Ephesians chapter 5, which says, At one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. So listen to these words again. Walk as children of the light. Try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Is there a prayer insight for us, for us as Christians today, from this? Yes. The verse says that Jesus gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age. The prayer insight for us today is simply this, that we should strive to become less comfortable with the sinfulness of this world. We have been called out from this world. We have been delivered from this present evil age for time and for eternity and also for now. And, uh, and so that should be something that you and I would pray about. That, that tomorrow we would be less comfortable with the sinfulness around us and the sinfulness in this world than we are today. That we would walk as children of the light, not because it's a re requirement of our salvation, no, but rather because it's a result of our salvation. It's a result of the Holy Spirit indwelling us and guiding us into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen? Amen. And life is so much better when you're walking in the glory of the light of God. Amen. Can we give God a thumbs up, a smiley face, a heart for that? Absolutely. And then the, the final part that I want to focus on in our devotion tonight is there at the end of this section where Paul, under the inspiration, says, an inspiration of the Holy Spirit says, that all of this is according to the will of our God and Father. And I think that's really super important for us to, to remember that, that this is according to the will of our God and Father. God has a say in this also. <laughs> and we, we need to remember that. You know, I think sometimes we think it's all about us and about what we think about something. God, God is God and God has a say in all of this. And I think, you know, regarding the will of God, uh, I think there's some passages I want, I want to draw our attention to. And I want to begin by pointing out that God, because of his, the nature of his will towards us, God is persistent in pursuing us. 
Thanks be to God. I mean, amazing grace is not just, you know, a once in a while thing. That is, that is God's continuous uh, approach towards humanity. He seeks us out when uh, we are in our fallen state and he clothes us in his righteousness. God is persistent in pursuing us. He passionately places his grace in our hearts and in our heads. God is is at work in this world through his means of grace, through the word, through the sacraments, and he, he passionately places his grace into our hearts and into our heads, and uh, because he, his will, scripture tells us, his will is for all to be saved. He doesn't want anyone to be condemned. And God has not double predestined some people into salvation and double predestined uh, some people into damnation. That is not the nature of God. God wants all people to be saved. John 3, 16 is perhaps one of the clearest indications and reminders of this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Um, now, we need to always remember that if we reject the free gift of grace, then we will be held accountable for this. Regarding God's will, I've got a couple of verses here I want to share with you. We are to pray for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 10. Jesus says that whoever does the will of the Father is his brother or his sister or his mother. Matthew 12, verse 50. Jesus prayed for his Father's will to be done. Jesus prayed for his Father's will to be done. Matthew 26, 42. And regarding our salvation, uh, Scripture is very clear. We are born again. We are born from above, not by human will, but by God's will, John chapter 1, verse 13. And uh, finally, um, if we worship God and do his will, he hears our prayer. John 9, 31, that's, that's, a, that's an important one. You know, we think about the will of God. If we worship God and do his will, he hears our prayer. And that's, that's a challenging verse because who here is perfect in keeping God's will? None of us. So then what do we, what do we conclude that? Well, then he's not gonna hear any of our prayer. Of course not. What is his will? His will is that if we went, not if, when we sin, when we fall short of his glory, what, that we would do what? That we would come and confess and that we would ask for his forgiveness and we would be forgiven. And then we are walking according to his will. And we would ask that uh, the Holy Spirit would instruct us and guide us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen? Amen. And then finally, Romans 12, 2. Let me read this verse to you. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but rather be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. Are you listening to this? Do not be conformed to this world, but rather be transformed. Now, how is this going to happen? By the renewal of your mind. And how does that happen? By the power of the Holy Spirit, by Scripture, by the renewal of your mind, that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. You're going to be presented with many different options tomorrow. You need to uh, use discernment. You need to test what is the will of God in the options that you face tomorrow and in the options regarding uh, decisions that will impact your life for a long time to come. That you would discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight. That's Romans 12, 2. And I think there's a great prayer insight in this for us as we wrap up. And that we would pray for three words that begin with the letter P. That we would pray for our path, our priorities, and our very perception. I'm going to say that again. That we would pray for our path, our priorities, and our very perception to be from God himself. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's great to be with you in, in God's word tonight. I want to encourage you. There's a prayer information card there on our Facebook page. Uh, share that with other people. Uh, you'll encourage them to pray. They may use the resource themselves. Take advantage of everything that you see on our Facebook, Facebook page, our YouTube channel, our website. And I want to encourage you to tune in or join us live in worship this weekend. Um, Nick Cass uh, just got back. He's our youth worker. He just got back from Mexico. He, I had him, uh, told me he needed to test for the COVID virus before he uh, came back to church. He did. He's clean. And so he's going to be sharing an update with us. 
and he's got some pictures to share with us. And uh, we were sharing out, laying out the vision for doing missions in Mexico to build homes next year. Uh, by God's grace, we'll be able to do that. And so we're, we're, we're looking to see if that's God's will for us. So check that out. Uh, check out, join us for worship this weekend. It's going to be awesome. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this chance to be in your word. We thank you, Father, that you declare what our identity is, that you have said, this is my identity, that you have said that I am your child. Father, I thank you that, that you not only declare whose I am, but Father, I thank you that you desire for us to be a part of your accomplishing your will in this world. And so, Father, help us tonight, tomorrow, every day for the rest of our lives to look at the options that are in front of us and to consider which is good and pleasing in your sight and then to cast all else aside, to throw off that which hinders us in our race, to run that race that's set before us, Father. Father, we, we, we pray all these things in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And all of God's children, we all say, Amen. Amen. Guys, it's great to be with you in God's Word. Look forward to being with you tomorrow night. And uh, tomorrow night is Friday, so I'll be doing, that's my day off, so I'll be smoking something out there on the smoker. And it'll be barbecue and Bible study theme for Friday night. So let's go in peace. Let's serve the Lord Thanks be to God. Amen.